Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Smart Bear, uh, broadcasting from Galway. Um, and we're about to do our new webinar. Actually, it's a. We'll be going over some uh, material from previous webinars, but we'll be joining it into a brand new webinar, which is artificial intelligence for faster and smarter software testing. Okay. Um, joining me today, I have Aaron Fox. Hello, Aaron. Hello, Dermot. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm enjoying the uh, clear weather we're having in Galway today. The one day of clear weather. Yes, it's our one day of clear weather this month. We had to schedule it especially for today while we were doing our webinar. Tomorrow it'll rain. Of course. And the day after it'll rain. <coughs> good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Dermot said, you're very welcome. And Dermot and I will be taking you through our artificial intelligence for faster and smarter software testing over the next hour, coming to you live from our European headquarters in Galway, Ireland. We do have a large attendance for this afternoon's webinar, so we'll give it another moment or two as participants are still flooding in. And they are really flooding. Um, it's good to see so many attendees joining our webinars, and I know that that will make the interactive portions of our webinar that much more interesting. Um, just on that subject, we've got a few polls for you guys to join in on. Um, and as always, we have our Q&A panel, um, which if you have any questions, that the Q&A panel is absolutely the best place to raise it because it helps us to track those. And then for just general feedback, we've got our chat, chat window, um, which is available to you there in your Zoom client. And just a reminder as well, guys, that if you are in attendance today, or even if a colleague of yours planned on attending and has this in their calendar as a registered attendee but was unable to make it, everyone will receive the recording of this webinar 24 hours from now. And as Dermot mentioned, we will be very grateful if you could try your best to keep all your questions in the Q&A panel. Absolutely. So Dermot, will we make a start? Our number of participants has, has seen, uh, seems to have leveled out. So Indeed. I think we potentially have everyone we're going to have. Well, for the time being anyway, and we'll see what happens over the course of the webinar, but I think we have enough to start with. Fantastic. So Dermot, the first question, let's get to know a bit about our audience this afternoon. So guys, as Dermot said, we have a number of polls that we're going to launch at various stages during the webinar. We would, would be grateful if you would answer these as accurately as possible because it does provide us valuable feedback, which does shape our webinars and the content uh, that we release going forward from SmartBear. So the first thing we'd like to know is how many people are in your team? Uh, the results are coming in. Uh, it's an interesting cross section. So it seems to be very um, it seems to be a very level playing field. Um. Absolutely. Well, yeah, it's quite linear. We've got quite a. Um, I'd say the majority is coming down on the ten plus range here, um, and then very closely behind it, you've got five to nine. So that sort of jibes with the idea of kind of agile teams being kind of. Yeah, it, it, it probably would. Um it probably would, uh, you could say, um, reflect what's actually happening in the industry today. And many people are working in agile behavior-driven development, and typically your teams would be somewhere between the, the five to maybe 15 mark, um, 15 probably being a very big agile team, um, but generally in that range. Um, so um, just for some visibility there, guys, 44% of you are working in a team of 10 or more, five to nine, 35%. 18% you're working in a small team of two to four, and uh, there is 2% uh, of people actually working uh, self-employed, so maybe contractors or consultants, so some description. Mm -hmm. So guys, thank you very much um, for participating in our poll. Valuable as always. So that, where that comes in handy for us is it gives us an idea of, you know, where we're, where we're broadcasting our webinar to, what sort of teams, what sort of engineers, what sort of people we're broadcasting to, and what sort of scenarios you're working in. Exactly. So just a quick introduction. My name is Aaron Fox. I'm joined here by Dermot Caniff, and we are both product engineers working in the Galway office in SmartBear. 
But Dermot and I specialize on the front end suite of tools, um, for example, test complete, cross browser testing, and several other tools as well. And we're delighted to be here with you today for our webinar. Absolutely. So Dermot, the key questions to consider over the course of the next hour or so, and these are going to be the main areas which we are going to cover. How is artificial intelligence transforming businesses? How can artificial intelligence impact software? What areas is AI impacting software testing the most? And what is SmartBear doing with AI to help testers? Those are all very critical questions in the industry at the minute. As we'll establish throughout the presentation, there are the webinars. So um, uh, I, for one, will be very interested to see what uh, the feedback will be during this webinar as we find out more about who are, who are who our attendees are and what they're doing and what their views are on artificial intelligence. Exactly. Um, there is some um, comments coming in there to the Q&A, Dermot, about um, audio. Can we just confirm if you could hit the raise hand functionality, if you have it on your screen, um, that you can hear us okay, that would be fantastic. Okay, that's a resounding yes. Thank you very much, everybody. Awesome. So Dermot, just a quote to start off today. We've had our lunch, bellies full. No, I think a good <laughs> philosophical quote um, from James Bertrand. Once we rid ourselves of traditional thinking, we can get on with creating the future. And I think this is very true about what we will talk about over the next hour. I think it's very true about how AI is shaping testing in general. It's such an advanced concept, um, talking about for example, computers, machines, devices, having essentially their own brain power, having their own intelligence. It's, it is a very um, advanced concept um, and it's very far-fetched in some, in some instances. Um, so it's understanding how a lot of people are quite cagey about it um, and people would be um, quite reluctant to let AI really run their software testing. Absolutely. So some examples of AI. Um, I think AI is, is everywhere today. And I think it's in places that people don't even realize it is. People are using AI every day without actually um, realizing what they're doing. So um, some examples here of AI. Um, Dermot, you don't own one of Amazon's Alexas, do you? I don't. I, I also don't have the Google uh, Assistant, but I do have it installed on my phone, which has led to some interesting conversations in my car. And your car is not a Tesla, is it? My car isn't a Tesla. No, my car is a, a fairly old Ford Fiesta at this point, but the, the phone is running most of my electronical in, my in-car electronics. Um, and if I've if I need to ask Google to do something like navigate to somewhere, I'll, I'll say, okay, Google, and it'll take me there. And I realized just having said that, that it may be answering me in my pocket right now, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll find to. out in a moment. Exactly. Yes. And that's a great example of, of AI. Um, I don't have a Tesla either. No, I'm saving for one. Okay. I'm saving for one. So for example, Tesla, your self-driving car, um, Alexa, which is um, your friend in a box, as it was once described to me. Um, and I think with things like uh, Alexa, it can do things around the house as well, can't it? It can turn your lights off, turn Absolutely. your appliances on and off, and so on. So these are all instances of artificial intelligence that people use every day and sometimes don't even realize it. Another really close to home, um, um, really close to home example, is for example, um, applications on our phone. Um, so self-completing emails or emails which depending on who you're talking to will prompt you different um, auto responses. Um, I was at a conference recently where one of the speakers done a talk about all the applications you can use to enhance your working environment to um, decrease your mundane tasks. And one of the cool ones he had was actually your own Gmail where if I said, if I sent a message to you saying, hi, Dermot, do you want to go to a CrossFit class at 2 p.m.? It had the intelligence to figure out I'm talking to Dermot, Dermot Caniff, I'm mentioning CrossFit, and then it can correlate into my phone. Uh, I go to CrossFit in this location, and it can actually put all that into a calendar invite for me. The answer is no, by the way. You know what I mean? No. Yeah, I'm doing something else at 2. Here's another one. 
Um, I've actually used this myself. Um, it works. I trial this on my own phone. All right. So for example, if you want to interact with Ray-Ban or many other outlets are, are doing this now. All right. You can do it directly through a chatbot. Ah, uh, okay. Well, that's fascinating. And, uh, and the AI is driving the responses from the chatbot. Yes. Excellent. Have you ever noticed, Dermot, that on your Facebook, when you, for example, go on to Amazon and you're looking at a laptop, and the very first ad you see on your Facebook when you open it, or your Instagram, or your Tumblr, or whatever you like to use, is for that very laptop or a selection of Amazon laptops. So this is AI using targeted ads, um, creating memory of, of what you look at and showing it to you at strategically placed times. Absolutely. I have noticed that as well. It does seem to be quite pervasive. Um, one instance where I encountered it, and it was, it was fascinating, actually. I was having a conversation about laptops um, on Facebook, and then the next time I went into Amazon, I had a slew of recommended laptops unbidden. So obviously there's some sort of artificial intelligence across the, uh, the permitted cookies there. You are probably laptop spec bashing on Facebook. Probably, yes. I've been known to do that. Um, Another example from a different industry entirely, so from a, an architectural or modeling point of view, this is uh, Dreamcatcher AI. I ran a similar webinar with another colleague a few weeks ago, and we actually had a head of development from Dreamcatcher on it, which was cool. Oh, wow. So when we showed this, um, we got a nice message. So here, for example, what you do with this piece of software, for example, is you would give it specifications. You would say, I need something that looks like a bike. It has to have two wheels and a saddle and a handlebar. And it will actually give you, use the AI to understand what you're saying, make correlations to real world objects, and build several different models of things you might like. Fantastic. I noticed as well that um, I had a look at the Dreamcatcher thing, and you can also put in other specifications like weight requirement and stuff like that, and it will adapt the, the design depending on what it needs to bear as well as the, the sort of functionalism. So. Exactly. So there are just some really cool examples of how AI is, is run um, around the world. So these are commercialized examples. They're the, the flagship selling points of AI. But AI is used at a lot of lower levels as well. You know, people use it in their testing for test, right, test cases to automate test runs um, and really just to improve the overall testing experience, take out the repetition, the mundane tasks and so on. So AI is also transforming established business models and how we approach software development. So um, if we look here, this is the software development life cycle. So from your plan to your um, maintain. You know, and if really we look, you know, this is your traditional waterfall model. But we can really apply AI in several areas of this to drive the speed, quality, you know, and cost. Wouldn't it be really cool, Dermot, if you had a system that was able to self-diagnose itself? Absolutely. Um, and create its own defects mm -hmm. and potentially even resolve its own defects and learn from, or a system that is able to learn from previous releases and alert, for example, if you're doing DevOps and you are in a releasing new functionality that the system itself can alert you to say, hey, um, you've done this to me before and I didn't like it. <laughs> so I'm just letting you know this might not work. Absolutely. And, and not in a sort of, Terminator 2 sort of way, but like in a, in a proactive, let's solve this sort of uh, situation uh, sort of way. Exactly. Dermot, next poll. Mm. How do you test the API and UI there in your organization? So we'd actually be really interested to know guys, what approaches um, you are taking. You know, maybe you're using AI, maybe you're not. Um, maybe you're uh, only looking at it. You know, from a, a test complete perspective, that when we're going to actually see a, a test complete demonstration later on where we demo our new AI features, but um, object recognition will be very big with test complete. Absolutely. And any sort of scenario where you're talking about robotics, OCR is definitely a key point. But there are other aspects of AI obviously employed. So, you know, even adaptive heuristics where 
your system encounters a scenario with certain parameters and then it remembers that for the next time it encounters the scenario. That's that's AI as well. That's um, It's a broad church, I guess, with a lot mm. of subjects. And that would probably fall over option three there, which is predictive healing. Exactly. So guys, this poll has been a landslide. Um, 91% of our listeners today, um, they actually do not do this, but they want to start. Mm -hmm. So you guys, you've come to the right place. Um, you know, this is the you know, webinar is designed for people of all experiences of AI, but particularly for people who have an interest in AI, know what it is, have heard about it, and just want to learn a bit more in terms of, of testing. So nine, or, well, it's 89% now. I do not use it, but I want to start. 2% for both yes for test design and yes for cloud-based virtualization, and 6% for yes for object recognition and 1% for predictive healing. So thanks very much, guys. So market trends and business goals are continuing to drive demand for faster release cycles. And we see this every day, don't we? When we talk to customers, whatever the product may be, and they just want to do things faster. They want to decrease their manual work, increase their release speed and the quality that they're doing things. So it's very much a case of they want to, actually you can say it because we spoke with this yesterday. Oh, yes. <laughs> they, want, they want to eat their cake and have it too. Exactly. And they need help with this. So <laughs> it's not a case of telling people, no, you can't do that. People want to release faster, test more accurately, all at the same time. Absolutely. And the thing is, it's no longer impossible. It's, uh, it's certainly achievable with modern technology. So this is something that we see every day, as you say. Exactly. And, and right up there, for example, you'll see everything from open source, RPA, robotics, ML, and at the top, AI. So we can see how it is driving, so you're driving your test automation, it's driving agile, continuous testing, but most of all, it's driving autonomous testing. Mm -hmm. And I think if there's anything you would, should consider applying your AI to, it is your autonomous testing. It's your repeated test cases that you want to run in the background and develop your results from, where you want to reduce your manual input and you want to reduce your, for example, test case refurbishment or refactoring. Exactly, especially in situations where you have mostly automated your test cases and then you have to occasionally provide some sort of intelligent interaction. It's best to kind of make an entirely automated um, test system along those lines. Exactly. So another quote, Dermot, this time from Salvador Cusimano. Um, I probably butchered that pronunciation. Cusimano. Cusimano. Do, do you know who he is? No. No. But he know. speaks the truth, obviously. Test big ideas in small ways that won't break the bank if they fit. So I think one of the big things with AI is when the penny drops and people realize how valuable this is, they're straight away thinking of the bigger picture. They want to automate absolutely everything in their environment. They want all of the tools, all of the intelligence. But it's not really as simple as that. And automation has a lot of pitfalls, there's a lot of complexities. And it relies on a huge amount of systems talking to each other and a huge amount of software working in tandem with each other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we always say, Derek, for example, with test complete, don't make an end-to-end -end test case that you're going to have to continually refurbish, refactor, and eventually just replace. Why not break up your end-to-end -end test into 10 little test cases and then link them together like a jigsaw? Exactly. And in terms of teams, if you're adopting some new strategy or new technology, and you adopt it across 10 teams simultaneously on a large project, for example, well, any pitfalls that you're going to encounter straight out of the gate are going to be encountered simultaneously by 10 teams, which maybe be amplifies catastrophic. the problem. Exactly. Whereas if you start it small, with one small team and then build it out over time as you learn, then that is more likely to succeed for you. Exactly. AI can help migrate common UI testing issues coming in the way of faster delivery. So when you're designing your test cases from an AI perspective, and, and I think, Jeremy, this is where you and I want to shine now, because this is, this, is, this is what we do, or this is what we, at least this is what we say we do. This is our day-to-day. -day. This is what we advertise we do. 
So when we talk about test design, we talk about object recognition. Can the objects that we want to test, can the framework in which these objects are created, can we actually interact with these objects, recognize them and control them? That's our first protocol with our testing. Then what we need to establish is what framework do we want to use? So there's, there's several different products and tools out there for testing. Um, which one of these best suits our needs and best suits the expertise of our team? And then inadequate prioritization. You know, this is something that we see so often there where people have their priorities completely mixed up. What's important is really not and what is not important really is. Absolutely. So they can quite often go with what seems to be the most appropriate uh, response or maybe it's the, the, the approach that fitted in the last project but not necessarily. Exactly. And I think you, you, you get that with a lot of legacy projects. You get um, process and you get methods and overflowing into the new regime when really you're trying to move away from that entirely. Exactly. From a test maintenance and execution. So again, we just mentioned a test refactoring. You don't want to be building test cases that continually need to be changed or updated. Your scalability, so you want to be able to extend out a test case. Um, so for example, one of the, the great things, um, for example, we find is what our tool is, you know, we can actually add new objects in on the fly to facilitate a change in the UI. So we could add a bunch of controls into our UIs, whether they be, for example, on a web or a desktop application, and we can just incorporate them into the test as we go. Mm -hmm. Or alternatively, establishing a test pathway with one set of data and then expanding that out to many sets of data. Exactly. Or across multiple platforms. Exactly. Even. Inadequate documentation. This is, this is the real... Um, pain point of mine. Um, you're always going to get somebody on your team or you're going to get some team. They know how to do it in their head and mm -hmm. they will not document it because they know how to do it and it's their baby. Absolutely. And the problem with this is if there's any shakeup in your organization, if people leave, if the team is remodeled, you could have a bunch of people that need to perform something and they have no idea how to do it because there's no documentation there. It's very similar to having uh, someone building a maze that they know how to go from A to B and then expecting someone else to do it without giving them the map. Absolutely. And once that person has moved on, then you know that's your single point of failure right there. Um, it's certainly something that can be budgeted for. I, have, I could talk for hours about uh, maintaining documentation, living documentation. but I know you could and that's why I'm going to move on now. That's for the best, I think, Aaron. Teams can benefit from modular AI investments in test design, maintenance, and execution. So in terms of intelligent test design, so again, your object recognition is, is hugely important here. You don't want to be bogged down with every time you add a new object or you change or you, you know, import a library for additional controls. You don't want everything to break and you have to you know, retune everything to work with the new controls. You want something that is robust, that has the um, ability and intelligence to just accept what it's getting and being able to work with it. Exactly. For example, if you um, import a new JavaScript library, um, I was actually working with a customer who was using Knockout.js. Okay. I've never heard of Knockout.js. It's well, a new one on me. Yeah. But you'd want something, for example, if it can support JavaScript, a tool that you import your Knockout.js, for example, or any other type of JS. And it can make that correlation that this is a JavaScript library, I can do this instead of just breaking. Absolutely. Framework generation as well, and that feeds back into what I just said. Exactly. So you establish what you require, and then the, the tool or whatever goes off and finds what it needs in order to run that. That would be kind of like Maven. Yeah, Maven does that, but you do still have to tell Maven what to do to a certain extent. Yeah. Risk profiling, is a, I think, is a, is a massive one. So, for example, wouldn't it be cool if we had a predictive analysis where before we run a set of test cases, you could have a system, um, maybe there's one out there, I don't know. I hope it'd be cool if there was. Um, that could return to you just a high-level thing, thing of, well, we think there's a high risk of these tests failing or in the future, this needs to be worked on or so on. Absolutely. Intelligent test maintenance and execution. So again, we touched on predictive healing, the ability of a system to correct itself. Yep, that would be the nirvana, I think, for an awful lot of uh, applications and product teams. 
intelligent book hunting. Yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. I was hoping you'd tell me a little bit more <laughs> about that. Well, I suppose what it implies, and I've done a little bit of research on this, um, is that you rely on artificial intelligence methods to actually go out and, and hammer your application, try and find where it may fall over. So you try and find gaps in your coverage and then test where the gaps are. Um, so that would be that would be a, a good application of artificial intelligence in this. So for example, if you were to put it in, into a real world context, you could have a sandbox server or a dev server, um, or even one dedicated to AI. And once a week, it could auto, you know, autonomously kick off a, a load of essentially, you know, brute force sort of tests and find any bugs. Absolutely. Then there's cloud-based virtualization. Mm -hmm. I think this is a huge one. You know, a lot of a lot of companies, a lot of people are moving their their software into the cloud. Uh, you know, from an API perspective, a lot of people are starting to mock, virtualize and mock their APIs as well. And it makes sense if you're trying to, for example, do an API test and you're reliant on a development team that could change the state or response of your API at any given time or even take it offline. Um, that's not a good. That, that that's not going to be good for your testing. Absolutely. And I suppose where AI comes in there is in sort of predictive capacity as well, predictive load balancing, predictive provision, um, just being able to know that you can spin up however many instances you need in order to meet demand. Exactly. And then finally, process automation, which this is really all about. Absolutely. Um, so whether that's test processes or uh, deployment processes, integration processes, just being able to apply AI principles to smooth that out and make that less problematic. So another poll, Dermot, for our listeners out there, how would you use AI to improve software testing at the UI layer? Um, is it a poll or is it a question? It's, I suppose, I think, hmm. I don't have a poll that matches that particular question, but. Oh, my apologies, I thought it was a poll. Let's just ask the question out there. Indeed. So guys, let's hear from you now. What would you use AI to improve software testing? If you're, even if you're not using something, you just have an idea, put it in the chat box. Um, it'd be really interesting to hear. So Dermot, how about you? How would you use AI to improve software testing? at the UI there? Well, I suppose one of the critical things there is um, in object recognition, as you covered in some of the previous slides there. Um, and that is really an area where AI shines in this space. Um, just to be able to, um, one of the truisms in, in UI testing is that you have a more resilient test if you're testing a model rather than testing the application directly. And how you decide how that model is formed and what shape that model takes is based an awful lot on whether your tool can recognize the application in all its various permutations. So AI is of use where you don't have a framework in, built into the application that you can rely on to build out your model. I think that's Again, I think that is the ultimate goal for a lot of UI testing tools and UI testing teams. Well, what do I have to do here, Dermot? I'm not certain. Oh. But it's a lovely sort of blue. It's very restful. Oh. And calming. I just, I just zoomed in. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry, guys. What does intelligent design look like? So again, Dermot, you touched on the object recognition, you touched on the framework generation, and then we also touched on the risk profiling. If you can look at test design and you can incorporate these three into it, you're most definitely using AI in your test design. Each update and new test cases of an application can act as inputs to help maintain that application. And I think you know this is again where a lot of things are going. So uh, I think Facebook is a great example here. So for example, every time we post something on Facebook, we like something, we comment on something, you know, that's really an input. 
into the application. And in the back end where all of the logic is being performed, it's developing outputs of that. So again, for example, if you like uh, several pages, um, soccer pages, for example, the next time you log on to Facebook, you're going to see all these soccer articles, videos, of soccer games, goals being scored, so on. Because Facebook is remembering your inputs, it's crunching the numbers in the background, and it's giving you the outputs which it knows will get a reaction from you. Absolutely. So you, simply by being active, you've provided input for the, the algorithm. Exactly. And from a, for example, software testing perspective, you know, we can input application controls, we can input instructions, uh, provide properties, or even just upload test cases or previous results. And would it be cool if the system could return as well? We recommend you use all of these frameworks and systems to do what you have just input it. Um, and we recommend you do it over these devices. Absolutely. What does intelligent test execution and maintenance look like? So again, these are very similar to what we've already touched on with our predictive self-healing, cloud-based virtualization, intelligent bug hunting, and process automation. So I'm going to have to go on too far. <laughs> AI can help refocus testing efforts to a new paradigm focus scale, coverage, and impact. So, you know, I think now, Dermot, you know, before people were focused on what is failing and why is it failing? They were focused on refactoring test results or tests to make more tests, focusing on what defects were being found as opposed to what weren't being found. There was a lot of repetition and stability was the, was the main one. It was, I think back in the old times, it was more stability as opposed to functionality at times. Absolutely. When we look at the new paradigm, it's not so much about what's failing, it's more about what's working and why is it working. It's about the business impact as opposed to anything else. It's about customer satisfaction and getting that test coverage where no matter what your customer is using platform or framework wise, your application is going to work. I'd just like to intercede at this point. Um, one of our attendees pointed out that the chat was disabled up until just now. So um, if anybody had trouble inputting any feedback in the chat window, you can please try it now and we'll see if there's, um, if I've managed to rectify that situation. Thanks very much to that person. I didn't realize that. Our apologies, guys. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So I think this could, could be the final quote of the day and it's from Steve Jobs, the founder of Apple. Innovation disguises, innov let me try again. Innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. And I think this is a big thing. I think if you want to bring these, this sort of testing into your organization or company, you are going to have to be a leader. You are going to have to put your hand up, offer to do this, offer to kick it off. A lot of people are quite happy using the tools they're doing. A lot of people are quite happy using the processes. They may not be the best tools. They may not be the best processes, but if you have a mastery over what you're doing, to you it's the best because you're the best at it. Absolutely. So Dara, now what we're going to do is we're going to talk a bit about SmartBear as a company. So who we are, what we do, the type of people we try to help. And then we're going guys to go on uh, and view our test complete demonstration, which is going to go through our new AI module on the 12.6 version, which was released on September 19th last, just over a month ago. Or is it a month ago? It's a month ago tomorrow. Yeah. A month ago tomorrow. Uh, just seeing the applications there before we advance, maybe we might want to ask our, our attendees what sort of applications uh, they have and what maybe that they would see would benefit from uh, AI visual recognition, for example. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Okay, so I'll fire off that poll. Do let us know what your thoughts are. Because aside from within this webinar, just to let us know, you know, what, what we're talking, who we're talking to and, and what you want to know more about. Um, it also help us, helps us in creating new webinars and deciding the content for the next webinar. So whatever help you can give, whatever feedback you can give is always useful. For sure. So Dermot, a lot of interaction on this. Um, PDFs are doing well right now. 
uh, SAP or ERP systems, Citrix applications have a few votes. Um, data viz, data viz uh, virtualization and business intelligence tools. Mm -hmm. Mainframe terminal emulators also has a small percentage. Thank you again, guys, for your continuous um, interaction. So a very um, evenly dispersed poll, I think, Dermot. So 40% um, of you guys uh, believe tools that help data virtualization or business intelligence tools, or maybe tracking business trends or forecasts or something like that mm -hmm. would be a value. 23% testing PDFs, 3% mainframe terminal emulators, SAP and other ERP systems at 28%, Citrix applications at 17%, and none of the above, I have another application in mind at 22%. That one's an interesting one. I'd love to drill deeper on that, but within this webinar, we won't have the opportunity, but it would be interesting to see what the other applications are. Oh, for sure. So, Dermot, this is our product portfolio, which you and I will be very familiar with. Uh, our 16 products in all, uh, soon to be 17 with our new acquisition. Um, so, Dermot, maybe you want to take us through um, the UI tools. Absolutely. So, along the top there, you can see the UI-based uh, applications, and they sort of map to particular stages in the software development lifecycle. So on the left-hand side, you've got Collaborator there. And what Collaborator allows you to do is um, basically set up your checkpoint system, your review system, to ensure quality at various stages in your software development. And you can review code, and you can review documents, and um, distribute that review uh, burden across different members of your team in different ways. And then moving into the middle there, we've got Test Complete and Test Left. Um, we'll be talking about test complete today and test left is kind of a close cousin to that and they basically compile a model of your application and then allow you to test it in, in a codeless fashion um, in a robust and, and reusable fashion and then over on the right hand side for more for the web products we've got cross browser testing and load complete and they basically allow you to to monitor and manage and and ensure quality across your uh, website on, either on different devices or using different loads. Fantastic. And I'll take the API at the bottom. So again, the, the API very much maps the, uh, to the software development lifecycle as well. So uh, Swagger Hub is a fantastic tool available on SaaS and on-prem where we can develop the, the code for a new API. And it also, while we're doing that, it'll auto-generate documentation as well. We can then take, for example, the Swagger definitions that are created or the API files themselves, and we can use SOAP UI Pro to functional test them. We can create virtualized APIs using Service B, and then we can load test them across various different types of load and performance testing using Load UI. SOAP UI, Service V, and Load UI are all part of our Ready API platform suite of tools. And then we can kind of finish off our, our flow with our synthetic monitoring tool alert site. And you can, for example, use your, your website from the top end, from the top of the, the stack, or you can use an API from the bottom. And you can monitor their performance, readiness, availability, response times um, using alert site. In the center, we have two test management tools. Dermot, you would probably be the better person to talk about hip test. Yeah, well, hip test, obviously, it's a relatively new acquisition for SmartBear. And what hip test offers is this ability to create and manage your tests in uh, a BDD fashion. So they facilitate behavior driven testing in your organization, allowing teams to collaborate with each other and ensure that their business requires requirements are maintained at all level of development. And that goes towards uh, documentation that's constantly updated, living documentation as we, as we call it. So hip test allows you to manage that flow. Fantastic. I think QA Complete would be your comprehensive test management tool that handles everything from test case creation, uh, manual and automated test runs, test scheduling, configuration, and defect tracking and reporting as well. Just a summary of fall 2018 product innovation. So today's focus is on test complete dermis. So um, 
what have we added to test complete in the last number of months? So again, test complete is a um, three monthly or a quarterly release cycle. So what have we recently added? So the big one around is the hybrid object recognition engine with AI. That is the, 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 I think at the moment you could almost say it's one of the flagship functionalities of the tool, even though it's only a month old. Absolutely. It's, it's huge. It's a massive change to the product. Um, not only in recognizing, uh, using our OCR patterns, but also in what, what that leads and the knock on effect it has to your testing. For sure. The intelligent recommendation system. So again, I've, I've used this quite a bit. I find it very helpful. So, um, you probably haven't Dermot because none of your tests fail. Um, <laughs> oh, I wish that were the case. I'm in a different boat. Um, so with test complete, if you ever have a failed test case, have you noticed the button, um, intelligent fix, which will, um, either fix it for you or it will bring you very close to giving you the fix. Absolutely. I've noticed that it's super useful. Um, especially if you've got some sort of issue, you can't necessarily see the solution automatically yourself, mm. but test complete now gives you some, gets you some way towards fixing it, if not fixing it completely. It's fantastic. And then we have, um, we're continuously, every release, we're continuously adding new frameworks to our support list. So recently React and Angular, I think Electron as well actually were added recently. Mm -hmm. um, and you can be sure with our next release, um, there'll be more libraries and more frameworks added as well. Fantastic. So test, uh, test complete 12.6 announces faster and smarter testing with artificial technologies. So, you know, German again, the great thing with test complete is it can be used by anybody anywhere. You don't have to have testing knowledge. You don't have to be a scripter or developer. You can use the recordless or not the recordless, the codeless record and replay functionality. And you can use drag and drop functionality of already made functions um, to incorporate AI into your testing. And we're going to see how all of this works very shortly. So we're going to see how we leverage the AI. We're going to see the intelligent fix. Uh, we're going to um, see the different prompts and so on. Brilliant. So our hybrid object recognition with AI helps address the one big issue in AI testing, and that is the object recognition. With Test Complete 12.6, we can recognize more objects more accurately than ever before. And that is really it in a nutshell. And it's interesting, if we track back to the poll we just took, um, a large proportion of our respondents were using OCR-based technology for it. That was where they saw the, the best use of AI in their application. So, Test complete satisfies that requirement out of the gate. Exactly. Property based and visual recognition together achieves maximum level of test coverage. And again, this is what we've tried to integrate into test complete. So we're using object properties. We're also using OCR, the optical character resolution to really allow us to interact with most of the objects you're going to find in applications. The vast, vast majority of them. And it's that combined approach that makes for a more resilient uh, test code base. Exactly. And just finally, our unmatched object recognition engine now includes artificial intelligence. So we're combining over 10 years of test complete innovation, a very good experience development support team with the new world AI powered features such as visual recognition. And I'm quite happy with the results of that. Very happy with them. Absolutely. Our hybrid engine makes it even easier to move from manual to automated testing. And test complete is about this. It's functional UI testing done through automation. Exactly. And as I mentioned, you don't have to be a developer. You don't have to be a scripter. You don't really even have to have a technical background to use this tool. So Dermot, do we have a poll for this or is it a public question? That's quite similar to the previous poll, but we might go with our next. So poll. I actually think you launched, maybe launched the poll maybe. a bit early. Okay, so will we just move over and on to the next one? Yeah, so what we might like to know is how you guys test your API and your UI layers currently. So we have 
The same te team tests the API and UI layer. Our different teams test the API and UI layer. Or either are. So this is a question we've been asking in a few webinars. Um, it's interesting to us because obviously we're making products that um, address one or the other area. We've got UI-based tests, we've got API-based tests, but more and more our customers are asking for integration between the two. And we're basically taking the pulse of the industry and trying to figure out how integrated the, the customers are. Exactly. So Dermot, it's now demo time, but uh, what's the results poll? So the results are, let me just share that window. So we're seeing 57% of our respondents are using the same teams to test the API and the UI layer. That's very interesting. Absolutely. So a lot of cross-functional teams out there. And that would probably suggest that people are utilizing some kind of end-to-end -end testing approach, or at least at the very least DevOps testing approach or an agile testing approach. Exactly. Whereas we've got 27% who uh, differentiate between API and UI. Fantastic. So Dermot, I'm going to now kick off the test complete 12.6 demonstration. Brilliant. So guys, this is test complete and maybe you've used this tool before, maybe you haven't. It could be, you could be an experienced user or this could be your very first look. If it is, you can get this on a free download on a 30 day trial directly from our website. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I want to draw your attention to is in file and install extensions, the presence of our new module. So previously and traditionally, test complete came with three modules, desktop, web, and mobile for your various testing. Now we have our fourth module, the intelligent quality, which incorporates our new AI features. So I have this module enabled. So for our testing now, we can use AI approach. I'm going to make a new project, Jeremy, and let's call it um, AI Webinar. That's a great name, Aaron. I think so, yeah. Let's do a website. So I'll select functional testing of web pages. And Dermot, what scripting language would you like to use? Ooh, um, today I think I'd like to go with JScript. JScript. I've actually never clicked the JScript option. Well, it's an ECMA compliant scripting language, which is a precursor to C++ script and C sharp script. Okay. You taught me something brand new there. Learning every day, Aaron. So guys, what we see here is on our interface, um, we have our center panel here. So again, if you're a test complete user or you've experienced with the tool, you'll be familiar with this. This is where all our codeless uh, drag and drop functionality is. But we've added in a new section here known as AI. So if I click on AI, we see we have some AI options here. So you have your OCR action or your OCR checkpoint. So the OCR checkpoint, for example, allows us to interact with PDFs or capture images or even any image and just pull the text from that. So things we previously could not interact with. We can also now do ES SAP systems. And in some cases, um, in some circumstances, mainframe consoles as well. Mm -hmm. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to record a new test here. And I'm actually going to use a website here on my Firefox browser. Uh, so I'm going to navigate to my shopping cart. And I'm going to log in with my username of test. I do like that shop. It's an awesome shopping store. That was a terrible joke. <laughs> I've had worse, in fairness. You've seen worse from me. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I had, no, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Okay. Hello, Tess. So I'm going to order an Xbox here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, one Xbox is more than enough for me. I'm going to select checkout. And I want to print my order. So this generates for us a PDF. Now, previously with test complete, if you tried to add a checkpoint to this, you would just get the entire frame because it would say, I can't recognize any object in this. Now what we have is if I select add check, which is our checkpoint on the fly, and I use an object property checkpoints, and I bring the bullseye onto the screen, which allows us to 
focus on a particular control and retrieve data to create our assertion on that, we can still only recognize the frame, but if I come into the PDF, we can now recognize the individual pieces of the PDF. So I'll just give it a second, Dermot, to uh, mm -hmm. warm up. I know how it feels. I think it's selecting the pain there. I think it's selecting the pain as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to stop this test and I want to close my background applications. My um, I broke the golden rule of test complete. Do not have any applications open when you want to test. There you are. Yeah. So I'm just going to cancel that and I'm also going to stop this test. I'm going to close my PowerPoint. I'm going to close it. I'm going to close this. I'm going to let my test run and then I'll repeat it again. Let me just fire up this test again, Dermot. Mm -hmm. I'm actually quite disappointed with myself. I broke the golden rule of test complete on, on the webinar. Well, it's easily done there. Okay, so I just fire this up again now. So I'm going to go back in here to my AI project. And let's record a brand new test. Take two. Brilliant. So I'm going to go into my Firefox browser. This is, you can use any browser, Chrome, IE Edge, any Windows-based browser. Firefox is my favorite, my namesake. Now get to my shopping cart again here. Log myself in. Uh, Rob Johnson has just fired into the chat there that if you break the golden rule, doesn't that mean you have to get the copies in the office now? Yes, Rob, it does. Have you any idea how many people are in this office, Dermot? <laughs> Maybe you could expense it. <laughs> I'm going to get the Xbox again. Check it out. Thanks very much, Rob Johnson. <laughs> And I'm back on my PDF. So now with everything working as it should, I'm going to use my object property, take my bullseye. And as you can see there now, we can actually interact with the various pieces of this application. Or not even, it's not even an application, it's a PDF. Yeah. Let's do a checkpoint on the total value of 599 US dollars. Or at least the bullseye, and it'll generate for us my checkpoint wizard. Here I can see the path to the object. I can select highlight to confirm, oh, well, it's hidden behind. So I can select highlight to see the object. Select next. And this is actually a cool feature of test complete that I quite like. It looks at the type of checkpoint you're creating and it looks at the control you're working with and what sort of methods are associated with that control. And then it creates a couple of of checkpoints of things you might like to use. And in this instance, it's correct because it's, it, it has properly assumed that I'm going to do a property checkpoint on the text content to see if it equals this value. And it's enabled it for me, and that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to say finish. That's an AI function in and of itself, actually. It is. I'm now going to go back and I'm going to log out. Close this down. Stop my test. So test complete now will generate for me the codeless keyword test. You can convert it to script if you prefer to work from a scripting perspective. This is the exciting part when it takes the activities that you performed while recording and changes them into test steps. I like this part. I am a bit of a geek in that regard though. <laughs> So here we see all of the test steps, Dermot, and without further ado, I'm actually just going to run this straight away. So here's our keyword test. It's our test steps in basic English. Each test step has a screenshot associated with it, which can be viewed in the test visualizer at the bottom. But let's jump straight in. I know we're getting to late in the day, and let's see this go. So 
So as it runs through, it's executing everything that you recorded, obviously. But yes. where we're getting to the meat of our presentation is when we're looking at this PDF. So it's quickly done a checkpoint in the background, I imagine. And then followed through with the test and our test gets passed. And if we look at the test script here front and center and we click on the um, checkpoint step and additional information, we can see that checkpoint indeed passed because it was able to read the text and it actually asserted that the actual value was equal to the expected value. Brilliant. We can, there's more to it. Um, there's more. Oh, right. We can also do this with capture images. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to open up my website again and I'm just going to navigate to the CAPTCHA image. And this could be any image. I've tested this before with uh, normal images, with, for example, posters, and I've been able, of events, and I've been able to pull the date and time of the event off it. So let's just go to the Xbox again. Let's go to the checkout. And let's go to pay offline and place order. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do the other option. Oh my God. Not to worry, Aaron. That was my fault. Let's go back and do this again here. And I want to go to... Just buy another Xbox. I have two at home, actually. And Just from doing demos. And a PlayStation. Accidentally buying them. Uh, so um, I want to go play offline. Closer. So now we have a capture image right here. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so this is an image, it's, right? So if I was to inspect that, it would be an image. Mm -hmm. um, a randomly generated image. So what I can do now in test complete here is I can use my, come back in here to my test one. This is just an empty test case. I want to take my checkpoint wizard, drag this functionality onto the test, create a new checkpoint on the fly, and I'm going to put it onto the OCR here. So again, this is not even picking up random character or individual characters. This is picking up just the image block. Mm -hmm. I'm going to release the bullseye here. Okay, the the image. And then I can click on this OCR option. It's going to scan the image and it's actually pulled the text back for me. Oh, fantastic. To use as I so wish. Okay. And that's how we can use images as well. Brilliant. So Dermot, we are getting to the end of our one hour block here, unfortunately. I could stay talking about this all day. I know, it's exciting. Um, so you have launched a poll there. Are you interested in being contacted to learn more? I am just going to finish off the webinar. Uh, I think we have one or two uh, more slides just to show. And then our class will be dismissed. You can all go on to the next class. And just remember, guys, you can come and avail of a free trial of this anytime you so wish directly uh, from our website. Oh, let me just skip on to the where we were on the slidesters. So Dermot, just some quick examples here of what we can now recognize. So we can actually recognize something like this. If you had something like this in your application, mm -hmm. a chart or map or something like that, Test Complete can now recognize each of these individual components. Oh, of course, because where you have text reported in, in say an image or a chart or a map, Test Complete is now able to pick those out, the text out and um, you can complete your test using that. Exactly. This is a big one, the, um, the terminal windows. Yes. We right. can now do the OCR and recognize piece of this. We've had quite a few customers um, who've asked for this and now they've got access to that sort of functionality. It's great. Exactly. PDFs that we've seen already today. And we can also do packaged apps. So SAP is a big one that comes up time and time again. We can now do SAP too and Citrix-based applications. So map applications work as well. Some map canvases do work yep. with label um, recognition as well. So Dermot, we've come to the end of our, uh, of our webinar. 
We'd like to thank everyone for joining. There is a Q&A section here. So I know we are at the top of the hour. So we we'll just, Joe will do. If there's any questions right now, let's take them. We will not have time to go through them all, but we do have a list of everyone that attended and their questions. And um, we'll answer one or two. So we actually have two in here now. Mm -hmm. Does this also work with captures where you have to click traffic lights? Hmm. That's a very good question. I'm not certain. Most of the captures that you would encounter are based on text or numbers. Mm. Um, as far you, I, I know exactly the one Fabian means, mm. uh, where you click um, all of the squares that include a fire hydrant, for example. Um, I'm not certain how we would achieve that with test complete, but it's something that we can research. For definitely. sure. And who knows, we could actually try this and it could work just fine. Mm -hmm. That's also a, a that, that, that's also happened in the past. Okay. Um, Jeremy, that was our only question to finish. Um, so we'd like to thank everybody for joining today. Uh, 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 we hope you found this and which you run on a monthly basis. You will receive your recording of this webinar 24 hours from now in your mailbox. And we'd like to thank you again for joining and we hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you all.